Today's lesson is cuisines of the world. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our show. I'm Roger, and I'm Helen. And I am really excited today. We're all excited because we're going to be talking about cuisines of the world. We're going to be talking about good food, especially food that comes from different parts of the world. Right. I'm very excited because you know these days when you want to eat out in Taiwan. You probably won't have a lack of choices of where you want to eat. You can have Italian food, French food, Indian food, Korean food—just a lot of choices. But just a few years ago, well, maybe ten years ago, fifteen years ago, there weren't that many choices. If you wanted to eat out, you would go to a Taiwanese restaurant or maybe a Japanese restaurant. There was a handful of American places, but the food choices have really increased these days in Taiwan because we've become so international. Would you agree? I. I would agree definitely, especially if you live in the larger cities like、uh, Taipei, Taichung, Gaoshang, even in Tainan and Jiayi, there are lots of choices for international cuisines of the world. So yeah, if you're you know getting a little tired of having your noodles and rice all the time, you might want to try something different. Go have some spaghetti or some tacos or some risotto or something. You've got plenty of choices. So in any case, here this is kind of specific because. Kevin and Luna are going to prepare a work dinner for their department. So this is a kind of dinner that's being prepared for people in their company. And of course, if people work for a company, they want to have some exciting food if they're getting together for a meal or if it's part of some seminar or something like that. So of course, they need to pick out some really special food for these people so that they feel really special. And so that they'll contribute to this、uh, meeting or whatever it is, and they'll continue to work happily for the company. So in today's program, we are arranging a department dinner. So let's find out what happens in Luna and Kevin's conversation. Let's listen to the first part right now. Cuisines of the world, arranging a department dinner. Luna and Kevin are preparing a work dinner for their department. Shall we get this planning session started? Sure. I think we should pick a type of cuisine first. I brainstormed ones that people might be interested in. Great. Let's hear what you've got. For Asian food, I have sushi, shabu shabu, and Korean barbecue. Hmm. Dishes at most of those places tend to be pretty meat heavy. We should make sure there are vegetarian options. I was thinking of things that are good to share in large groups, but you're right. What about Western food? A lot of Western restaurants mostly serve individual dishes, but we could do pizza. That's a possibility. What do you think of tapas? I like the sound of that. They're easy to share, and there should be something everyone can eat. We might want to check with our colleagues first. Let's make an online survey. My friends and I have decided to move our weekly gaming session to Saturday evenings. 我和朋友决定把每周的游戏时间改到周六晚上。再来，我们看到一个动词 brainstorm， 有脑力激荡、集思广益的意思，像是。The class brainstormed ideas for a science project. 全班集思广益想科学计划的点子。And we're back, and in the first part of our dialogue, which is called arranging a department dinner, we've got Luna and Kevin who have been put in charge of organizing a dinner、uh, for their coworkers with their coworkers. Now, the first thing they need to do is decide on a cuisine. As the title of our lesson suggests, there is more than one cuisine in the world. Now, cuisine is a word that comes from French, and it means a style of cooking of a particular country or region. It's a sort of fancier way to say food when talking about the foods of different geographical locations. So instead of saying "I love French food," I could also say "I love French cuisine." Right, and、uh, I like you know Italian cuisine or Mexican cuisine or Kajak cuisine. You can say anything you want to. So these are different kinds of food, 
in the world. And again, we've got Luna and Kevin, and they are arranging a department dinner, a dinner for the employees in their department. So here, Kevin begins the conversation. He says, "Shall we get this planning session started?" So maybe the、uh, people who are involved with this planning session are kind of sitting around chatting, and it hasn't really begun yet. So this is how Kevin can kind of. Bring everything to order and get all their attention. They can get down to business and discuss this dinner. This is a planning session. So a session is a period of time in which something takes place. Right. And Luna says, "Sure, I think we should pick a type of cuisine first. So in order to plan this event, this department dinner, we need to find out a lot of things like、uh, which restaurant we want to go to, what kind of food we want, and how much it's going to cost." And Luna says, "Well, the first thing we should decide." Is the type of cuisine that we want, and she says I brainstormed ones that people might be interested in. Now, brainstorm here is to、uh, think about something, to discuss something, in order to find a solution to a problem or to arrive at new ideas. Right. Sometimes brainstorming can be kind of、uh, unplanned. Basically, you just kind of think and、uh, you just throw out any idea you think of, no matter how silly it is. Who knows? It might actually be a good idea. So you just think and think and think about things. Gee, what kinds of food would our coworkers like? Would they like Korean or Russian or food from Kazakhstan or something like that, or food from Mali or various places in Africa? Yeah. What What kind of food are we going to eat? They just make all these suggestions, and she has brainstormed ones that she thinks the people might be interested in. Like she knows her coworkers pretty well. Yeah, I think they might be interested in Korean food or Japanese food or Vietnamese food. So she's come up with all sorts of ideas. Right. So she's throwing out these ideas. What she's about to throw out the ideas. Kevin says, "Great, let's hear what you've got." And Luna says, "For Asian food, I have sushi, shabu shabu." And Korean barbecue. So she's come up with three choices, and all of these choices are a part of Asian cuisine. And sushi, of course, is made with rice and fish, eggs, or vegetables rolled inside or on top. Shabu shabu is Japanese for the hot pot dish that consists of sliced meats and vegetables, which you dip in the broth and sauce. And Korean barbecue, I'm not really sure how it's different from regular barbecue. I think it has to do with the way the beef, the meat, is sliced. But in any case, Luna brainstorms ideas and she throws out these three choices. And these three choices involve a lot of meat here: sushi, shabu shabu, Korean barbecue. All involve a lot of meat. And Korean barbecue, of course, is quite tasty, so that might be a very good suggestion. Here's what Kevin says: Hmm, dishes at most of those places tend to be pretty meat. Heavy. That does not mean the meat in those dishes is heavy. He's just、uh, saying that these dishes contain a lot of meat, like a Mongolian barbecue, for example. That's mostly meat. Okay, it's very good if you love to eat meat, but if you don't like to eat so much meat, you don't want so much protein, or if you're a vegetarian, that's probably not going to be a good choice for you. Right, so Kevin is being thoughtful. He's being diplomatic, or perhaps he's being selfish because he's a vegetarian. We don't really know, but he does point out a good point, which is that some of the people in this event, in this dinner, might not eat meat, or they don't really like eating meat. So they should consider those people who would prefer some more vegetarian options and Asian foods. Really, don't have that many options that are based on vegetables. Right, so it's, I guess it's probably okay that they serve meat-heavy dishes. That's fine, but they should also provide some choices for vegetarians who don't want to eat any meat. So yes, we need to make sure to make certain there are vegetarian options or choices for people who don't like to eat meat. And here's what Luna says: I was thinking of things that are good to share in large groups, but you're right. So that's what she was thinking: food that can be shared by a lot of people. Together, 
which means that、uh, basically they eat all pretty much the same thing, and they don't have individual choices. But、uh, she also recognizes that Kevin's suggestion is good. Yes, we do need to offer some choices for vegetarians. Right, and Kevin comes up with another suggestion. He says, "What about Western food?" And Luna replies, "A lot of Western restaurants mostly serve individual dishes, but we could do pizza." So Luna says, "Well, Western restaurants is a good suggestion, but the problem is, in most Western restaurants, people order their own dish, and it's really difficult to share those dishes." But there is one exception, and that's pizza, because pizza comes in a big as a big pie, and then you can slice it and share it amongst a lot of people. And Kevin says, "Okay, that's a possibility." But he has another idea. He says, "What do you think of tapas?" Tapas, okay.、Uh, I think that's some kind of Spanish food where you serve all these little individual side dishes or something like that, and you get a lot of different kinds that you can try. So that's Kevin's suggestion, tapas. And Luna says, "I like the sound of that." So,、uh, because he's making this suggestion verbally, because he is talking about this suggestion, well, then Luna has heard this with her own two ears. So she says, "I like the sound of that. I like your suggestion because you voiced it out. It's a wonderful suggestion, Tapas."、Uh, they are very tasty, and you can probably have them with gazpacho and flan and even some Jerez wine. Right, you can have them with sangria, and it just sounds like a really fun and delicious meal. So she says, "I like the sound of that. They're easy to share, and there should be something everyone can eat because there will be vegetables and meats and just all kinds of food." And Kevin says we might want to check with our colleagues first. Let's make an online survey. So he doesn't want to just decide for everybody or he and Luna. So he wants to find out what the other people in the group. Uh, their colleagues will think about this decision. And colleague here means a person who works with you、uh, in your company, in your organization. So it's another word for coworker. And Kevin wants to see what his colleagues, his coworkers, think about the choice of having a tapas meal. What a guy! He's willing to seek out other opinions. He's not going to make everybody accept his opinion. And they're going to have a great meal here. Okay, so that's、uh, one choice here—the kind of food they want to have. The next choice is to pick out a restaurant. So let's move on now to the next part and hear them discuss which restaurant they're going to go to. Picking a restaurant. Well, the results are in. It looks like the tapas idea was a hit. Great. Now we just need to pick a place. Let's look online for suggestions. Here's a restaurant that looks promising. From the pictures, it seems like they have an extensive menu. The reviews are pretty mixed, though. I found a place too. Most of the reviews say the dishes are really authentic. And it's rated at 4.8 stars out of five. That's a high recommendation. There is one downside: the prices are a little steep. How about you check the budget, and I'll keep looking. Okay, I've calculated how much we can spend per person, and unfortunately, I think that restaurant is out of our price range. That's too bad. Here is one that might be a good compromise. It's got 4.5 stars. The reviews are mostly good, and it's more modestly priced. Sure, let's give them a call to make a reservation. Third part, we see the word extensive. This word is a descriptive word, meaning extensive, large, large, and broad. As an example, the detective carried out an extensive investigation in an attempt to solve the crime. The detective carried out an extensive investigation in an attempt to solve the crime. The detective carried out an extensive investigation in an attempt to solve the crime. The author wrote extensively about her experiences during World War II. 这位作家广泛地描述她自己经历第二次世界大战的经验。接下来，我们看到一个形容词 authentic， 课文中指实物、到底的。例如 ，The fast food chain's Mexican food was far from authentic, but still quite tasty. 那家素食连锁店的墨西哥料理一点都不到底，不过味道还蛮不错。另外，这个字除了上面的意思，还可以指真正的、非假冒的
，可以说 ，After a thorough inspection, it was determined that the painting was authentic. 经过一番透彻的检验后，那幅画被判定是真迹。再来，我们看到一个单字 recommendation， 这个字是名词，指推荐、介绍。举例来说 ，The recommendation that Chris gave me before the trip helped us save a lot of time. 出游前 ，Chris 给我们的推荐帮助了我们省很多时间。另外，补充这个字的动词 recommend, R E C O M M E N D, recommend 有推荐、建议的意思。可以说 ，Nathan recommended that her sister take her money out of the stock market. Nathan 建议他姐姐把资金从股市中抽回来。接下来，我们看到动词 calculate 用来指估算。估计或计算，像是 at the end of each month, Rex calculates how much money he spent. 每个月月底 ，Rex 都会计算他花了多少钱。另外，补充这个字的名词 calculation, c a l c u l a t i o n, calculation. 所以可以说 my calculations were wrong. The vacation will cost more money than I had thought. 我的估算错了。这个假期会花比我预期还要多的钱。最后，我们看到一个单字 compromise， 这个字是名词，指折中、让步。例如 ，If you're not happy with our offer, perhaps we can suggest a compromise. 如果你不喜欢我们的提议，或许我们可以提出一个让步的提案。另外，这个字除了当名词用，还可以做动词，有危及、连累之意。我们可以说。Kelly's unhealthy diet compromised her immune system and made it easier for her to get sick. Kelly 不健康的饮食习惯危害到免疫系统，让她很容易生病。And welcome back to the second part of our dialogue focus, which is about cuisines of the world. So. We heard before that Luna and Kevin are trying to choose a restaurant for their department dinner, but before they can do that, they must first choose a cuisine. Luna suggested Asian cuisine, but Kevin thought that that non meat eaters would not like that choice and pointed out that tapas may be a better idea. And they decided to do an online survey to see what their colleagues would think about that idea. Indeed. So yes, the、uh, survey results are in, and it was a hit. Everybody likes the idea of tapas here, so that's what we're going to go with. Luna says, "Great. Now we just need to pick a place. We need to find a restaurant that serves tapas." And Kevin says, "Well, let's look online for suggestions." Okay, that seems to be the way that everybody finds information these days. Do a Google search for tapas restaurants in Taipei or whatever. And Luna says, "Here's a restaurant that looks promising." So here we've got the word promising. That means something has a lot of promise or potential. So if you say something is promising, that means you're likely to have a good result. Right. For example, the doctor says John's test results look promising and that he should get better soon. So they look good. And looking online, Luna has found a restaurant that she thinks looks promising because she's looked at the pictures, and from the pictures, it seems like they have an extensive menu. So she's looking at pictures of the food served by the restaurant, I guess. And judging from those pictures, she guesses that the menu is extensive. It offers a lot of different choices, and extensive here means very large. So, an extensive menu has a lot of selections, which could be good and bad. I remember watching Kitchen Nightmares, and Gordon Ramsay seems to dislike restaurants with extensive menus. He likes their menus to be kind of simple with some really good items. But、uh, let's see what Kevin says here. He says the reviews are pretty mixed, though. Which means some people like it, some people don't like it. You might hear that about a movie. Did you go see the new DC movie? Well, reviews were mixed. Some people liked it, some people hated it. So yes, this restaurant has mixed reviews. And Kevin says that he found a place too. Most of the reviews say the dishes are really authentic. They're like the kind of food that you would actually be able to enjoy in Madrid or in Barcelona or places in Spain. There, so yes, the reviewers or the people who have been there say yes, this food is like the real thing. 
Right. If you're going to go to a Spanish restaurant and you're going to have tapas, you don't want the tapas to taste like Chinese food or Taiwanese food. You want it to taste like it was made by somebody who knew what he or she was doing. Somebody from Spain. And Luna is looking at the screen of Kevin's laptop computer, and she says, "And it's rated at 4.8 stars out of five, so it could possibly have received a score of five stars. But 4.8 is pretty good. That's the average of the reviews." And she says, "That's a high recommendation." Now, remember to recommend. That's the verb. That's when somebody gives you some advice and tells you what you should do, or if you go to a restaurant. Well, if never. Had Turkish food before? What do you recommend? What do you think I should eat? And of course, the noun is recommendation. What's your recommendation? So, if this restaurant received 4.8 stars out of five, which is pretty high, it means that a lot of people are recommending this restaurant. The recommendation is that if you've never been to this restaurant before, then you should go because the food is authentic and perhaps the service is great. And I don't know, what about the prices? Is it worth it? Yeah, that's the other consideration here, and that's what Kevin says. There is one downside: the prices are a little steep; they're a little high. And Luna says, "How about you check the budget, and I'll keep looking." So he needs to see how much money they have, and Luna is going to continue to do some research. A few minutes later, Kevin returns and says, "Okay, I've calculated how much we can spend per person, and unfortunately, I think that restaurant is out of our price range." It's beyond our budget. Here, the verb to calculate means to do some mathematics in order to come up with an answer or a figure. Right. So he calculated the money, or I could say I calculate how much money I can spend at the end of each month to make sure that I keep within my monthly budget. And here he calculates how much money. Perhaps they have one sum of money, and then he needs to divide it between the number of people that are in the group. And he's calculated that amount and has come up with the result that they can't afford to go to this restaurant. Okay. Well, Luna says that's too bad. That's unfortunate. Here's one that might be a good compromise. Another restaurant. A compromise means you kind of come halfway. You want that, and I want this. They're the opposites, so we kind of have to find a solution that we're both happy with, even though we don't get a hundred percent of what we want. This particular place has got 4.5 stars. The reviews are mostly good, and it's more modestly priced. So modestly here, as an adverb, just means their prices are not so high. Right, the prices are lower, and it's true. In life, you have to make compromises sometimes. And in this case, they made a compromise by choosing a restaurant that had fewer stars. The reviews were still mainly good, but the prices are lower. They're modestly priced. And Kevin says, "Okay, sure. Let's give them a call. Let's make a telephone call to make a reservation, so they can go there when they need to go there and have a great old time with their colleagues having the tapas." Okay, that brings us to the end of our explanation for today. Let's listen now to our Chinese teacher. Good students, 大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。对话里面两位主角在帮他们部门准备晚餐聚会。那一开始 ，Kevin 说 ，Shall we get this planning session started? 我们要开始计划了吗？好，句子里面的 shall 它是助动词，常常用在条约或是法令等等文件里面来表达必须怎么样，应当怎么样。这语气通常是带有强制命令的意味。不过 ，shall 用在问句，并且搭配第一人称 I 或是 we 的时候，常常是用来表达提议或是询问意愿。像是你可以说 ，Let's go see a movie, shall we？ 我们去看电影好吗？好，那我们另外要介绍的是补充单字 session 它的字根 s e s s。这个字根它有 sit， 就是坐或是就坐的意思，它也带有这种保持在某种状态的含义。那在 session 这个字当中 ，s e s s 表示坐，那么 i o n 是名词字尾。同学们可以试着想想，是什么场合需要大家一起坐下来呢？这通常就是有开会集会的时候嘛。那么 session 这个字，它具有会议、会期的意思，也可以用来指你从事某一项活动的一段时间或是一场。
。好，顺便补充两个有相同字根的单字哦。第一个是 obsess，o b s e s s， 它的字首 o b 有对抗的意思。那么字根 s e s s 表示做，那同学们可以试着想，粉丝们看到心爱的偶像就好像被困坐在那里，你完全无法抵抗他的魅力，整个人都被迷住了。所以 obsess 这个动词它就有着迷、迷住的意思。好，第二个字 a s s e s s。assess， 它的字首 a s 表示朝向，那是来自 a d， 因为 a d 碰到 s 开头的字根，它是拼作 a s。好，那后面的字根 s e s s 表示坐。好，那把它的字首字根合在一起，就会带有那种坐在一旁的语义。这个 assess 它其实是用来描述法官助理在旁边协助处理罚款或是税款的事情，去估算财产价值，才知道要付多少税款。所以呢 ，assess 这个动词它就有估价、征税或是对什么什么做评估的意思。接着我们看到对话里面 ，Luna 回答说，他认为应该要先挑选一种料理。他绞尽脑汁想了一些大家可能会有兴趣的料理。那这边他用到一个补充单字叫做 brainstorm， 这表示脑力激荡、集思广益。好，那我们顺便来学几个跟大脑 brain 有关的单字。第一个是 brainwash。他把 brain 大脑跟 wash 洗东西的那个洗合在一起，变成一个字。那么 brain wash 就表示洗脑，强制改变想法。第二个单字 brain power， 从字面上来看就是脑力嘛，那它也可以用来指智囊啊，智囊团。那么第三个 brain teaser。Tease 这个动词 ，T E A S E， 它有逗弄的意思，会逗弄我们大脑的事物，那就是脑筋急转弯，动脑谜题要你动动脑嘛，所以 brain teaser 就是脑筋急转弯哦。好，再补充一个用语叫做 no brainer， 就是用 no 加上连字号，在 brain 后面再加 e r。No brainer 字面上的意思是不用动脑的事。这个名词就是指不伤脑筋、非常容易的事，或是非常容易做的决定或选择，你根本就不用想。好，那么以上是这些重点整理，我们来回顾这些单词吧。Cuisine. Dre learned how to make cuisines from around the world when she studied to be a chef. Colleague. I'm going out for drinks with some colleagues after work, so I'll be home late. Promising. That's a very promising idea, and I think we should develop it further. Extensive. Dorothy made extensive changes to the report before submitting it to the clients. Calculate. Bill calculated how much cloth we would need to produce each set of curtains. Compromise. In a compromise, nobody gets exactly what they want. Modestly. The game is selling modestly now, but we think it will be more popular around Christmas. Well, that brings us to the end of another edition of our program. And please make sure you join us again next time. From all of us here, I am Roger. I'm Helen. See, See you next time. time.